So we got Mission Improbable out to the track last night and we had success and we had failure. We had failure. So the success is all hers. Mission Improbable ran her best lap ever last night by a decent margin. And the failure, well, the failure was all on me. And I'll explain that in a minute. So where we left off with this thing, uh, no traction. Traction has been our problem. I mean, big problem. It runs really strong through the mid-range. But off the starting line, and actually the last time we ran this thing, after Dr. Art put his tune-up on it, it literally spun the tires clear to the 450 foot or so mark. It was just freewheeling. You saw that video the last time out. So now we know, we knew, before we could take this thing out again, we have to do something for traction. So we know we need, it's got an open rear, so we know we need a, a sure grip, a posi rear, a diff, and I haven't had the time to go hunt for one yet. Now the hunting is important because remember, we have a $3,000 total all-in budget on this vehicle, and so far we're into it for like $1,860, or up to, that, up to this point. So the margin is starting to get slim. A, a used junkyard sugar unit is going to be the way to go. And no, we're not welding spider gears. We've already been through that. So I says, all right, we need sugar grip and we need tires. So let's just do tires because that's something we can just lay our hands on right now. We know we're going to have to buy new anyway. So I went hunting for the cheapest pair of big tires I could find. And I came up with these. The the mile star street steel china's best so they're uh 275 60 15s and they fit the truck really nice right? it really gives this thing an aggressive look and traction so last night i says well i gotta at least see what difference the tire is gonna make so by myself i jump in Mission Improbable, and I run it 75 miles out to Etheridge. So I go there, pull in, let the, I let it cool off like five minutes, pull into the stage lanes to make my first run. And that's where I made my first mistake. And that, you know, time trials, time shots, you kind of got a choice what you're going to run against. And I made the mistake of lining up next to a very loud, very fast vehicle. So I couldn't hear, this thing's quiet. And I'm still learning to launch it to work it so first mistake was i lined up next to something very loud very obnoxious i couldn't hear myself think couldn't hear what this thing was doing and i overestimated what the tires were going to be worth so come off the clutch i came off a little too hard it freewheeled the tires i let off got back in it sort of bogged a little bit and then i ran it the rest of the way through throwaway run but I figured let me just run it the rest of the way through anyway so a funny thing happened when I shifted second gear so like I said I knew it was a wasted run but you know you have to make everything else count so I bang shifted second and for the first time when I hit second this thing hit hard it wasn't just a power shift it was a bang shift and you could really feel this thing dig and go right and I had one of those intrusive thoughts. You ever have intrusive thoughts? Well, for me, intrusive thoughts generally consist of common sense. Okay, so there I am going down the track. I bang second, it's bang, right? And I suddenly realized that I'm here by myself. I drove this thing to the track. I don't have anybody with me and I don't know anybody at the track. Now, years ago, right, any place my, my life was just going to and from drag strips. That's like for years, that's all I did, right? I, every place I went, I knew dozens of people. There was no such thing as being stranded or having an issue that couldn't be solved right then and there. It's not like that anymore. I go so infrequently and I, I stay 
for just the shortest period of time. Like I get to the track, I do my business, and I, I get out of there as fast as I can. I never meet anybody. I never I never socialize. I, so it, it's it's the YouTube thing. YouTube has turned me really into a, a rec I mean a really a recluse now where I just kind of you know it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain, but it's a, it's a character flaw of my own, and I recognize it, and it's just what it is, right? So. Uh, Bang second, and then realize this thing has a good chance of breaking itself. Uh, uh, bang third, bang right. Okay, that's that's exactly how it went. All right. So now I'm saying to myself, all right, just get it off the starting line and just kind of like baby it. Just get a number, just an improvement. Let's get an improvement, right? So I go back around. It's still hot, right? I didn't even get a, a, a really a cool off period. I go back around, the lanes are empty, I pull straight up, I'm by myself, I'm like, okay, now I can focus, I can concentrate, it's nice and quiet. Do a quick burnout, stage it, and for the first time ever, I was able to walk this thing off the starting line. I had to walk it off real easy, I was real conservative, right? Kept the RPM reasonable, kept you know, very, you know, very easy off the clutch. I didn't really get aggressive until I felt it really moving forward. Okay, so it was soft, but I was able to walk it out. I was never able to walk this thing out before. She drove through first, bang second, same thing, just bang, right? She's right there and it's, it's solid. Ran it through, third gear, and and I knew it was a good run. I knew it was the best run that this thing had done, but I didn't know how good. So, so I mean, this is the custom of the truth, okay? So I drive, I drive down the return road to the time card booth. The girl hands me the, the, the time slip, right? Yeah, I got the time slip over here. Girl hands me the time slip. Nine eighty eight. It ran a nine eighty eight, right? And I was like, "Yes, okay, finally, we broke the barrier. It actually made a pass. Didn't spin the tires. Everything was good. Ran nine eighty eight. Let me get out of here before my luck runs out." So I went from the time card booth, and there's the exit to the track. So I just made a right from the time card booth down to the exit of the track and went home. Because if I had pushed it, I, I, and I had Jamie's deal from last week in my head. By the way, he snapped an axle. That's what happened with his car when we, we ran Slaghammer. So I got Jamie's thing in my fresh in my head. I'm like, okay, this thing's biting on the shifts and everything. What's going to break? Is it going to be a U-joint? Is it going to be a ring gear? Is it going to be a spider gear? Is it, it what's what's going to break? It's going to break something, right? Am I going to launch the transmission? So, like I says. I got the time card. I was like, yes, okay, finally, she runs in the nines, eighth mile, of course, right, which equates to like a 1560. If you don't think 1560 for a, a stock Jeep Cherokee is, is stout, right? Okay, but that's besides the point. I got me a number and I was happy. And that's it. Let's not push our luck. Let's not let's not break things. I, mean, I don't know anybody here, and it's a 75 mile Uber ride back to my trailer, so I can come pick this thing up. Next time I do this, it's got to go on a trailer. I know the whole purpose of this vehicle is to drive it to the track, make your runs, and then drive it back. But yeah, just no. Okay, <laughs> just, just no. I'm too old for that. Uh, next time I got to go by myself. It goes on the trailer. But I'm happy, I'm thrilled, I'm content. And I also know that with a little more practice, like if I had stuck around last night and made another couple of runs, I know I could have gotten this thing into to the 960s or so. There was a couple of tents right there on the starting line. And if you watch the video, you can see what I'm talking about. So very happy, very content. We've we've crushed the barrier. <laughs> it sounds so impressive, doesn't it? We crushed the barrier. We're in the single digits in the eighth mile. 
What a stock four liter Jeep. That's impressive. I don't care who you are. That's impressive. So that's where we're at with that. Over the next week or two, I'll try to find a sure grip. Before we go out again, I'm going to try to find a sure grip. Although, I tell you the truth, I, I think, you know, okay, see, I, ch I changed my, my mind on the fly. It's, I have problems, okay? Now, I, I'd like to max out and see what we can get with just the tires before we go to the shore grip. So maybe next time we take it out, we'll just we'll just keep the tires on there and just work on our, work on my driving skills and work on tuning into this thing and, and go from there. So, but that's where we're at with Mission Improbable. Yay. Okay. Um, other stuff that's going on. You guys saw the video I did on my, my new Ulysses. So I'm just digging through now. Tomorrow I'm going to try to put a couple hundred miles on the spike. So plugs. Yeah, the plug access is, is not typical. <laughs> it's, it's tight in there. So just going over this thing. And Slaghammer actually is getting some attention too. And the valve covers off. I'm going to change these cork gaskets. i got a leak over here. Um, but the big thing, the big thing with Slaghammer is I'm finally, after two years, after two years, I'm finally going to swap out the valve body. I have a nice manual valve body. This valve body went in there two years ago so it could go on power torn. It's just a stock valve body with the, with the, the throttle position uh, lever tied back about halfway. So when you go to shift it manually, like at the track, you shift and then like, you know, a second later it actually shifts. So I'm swapping out the valve body now. I would like to get this thing out next week and try to make a couple of good hard passes on it. So that's what's going on with Slaghammer. And poor Bottle Rocket, she just sits there waiting for the next challenge and we may have one. Before the end of this year, I believe Bottle Rocket has a, uh, a challenge. But I'll wait for the, for the other party to post on their channel what it is. So, Final Rocket, I know, I, I love that car. I know a lot of you guys do, do too, so she's gonna get attention soon. So, that's it, success, failure, and I should probably go seek therapy of some sort because I'm in the wrong business. I love doing these videos. I love working with you guys and, 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 and everything that goes with it. But I'm terrible with public, any type of public appearance. It's like, I can't begin to tell you. It's like, I just, you know, I just hide, I hide, and then I run away. I have a problem. I'll see you tomorrow.